These are the geniuses that earn themselves a place in the landed gentry and in business history. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most influential business moguls. My father worked hard and set an example for me, and, uh, and I know a lot of people that work hard. For this list, we have included both founders and builders who either launched new businesses or grew existing ones to the peak of their industry and won the admiration and adulation of others. I, I felt that the uh, experience of flying on other people's airlines was an unpleasant one uh, and I decided to set up an airline. However, we've decided to leave tech tycoons off this list since we've got another list of the top 10 most influential business moguls in technology as well. Number 10. Ted Turner, founder of CNN and TBS. Well, I definitely feel that the quality of, of television programming has generally declined, uh, certainly in the last 10 years. I didn't watch much television before I got in the television business. After taking over his father's billboard advertising business in 1963, Turner expanded the enterprise by branching out to other media outlets most notably with the acquisition of the station that eventually became the superstation, TBS. Outside the realm of media, Captain Outrageous purchased two major sports teams, the Atlanta Braves and the Atlanta Hawks, in part to deliver content to his TV network. One big idea that he did have, but sports on national television on more or less a daily basis, Ted did that, and the Daily Sports Studio Show on at the same time every day or night. Ted did that too. And buying sports team to have something to put on your television station, Ted did that too. A decade after establishing Turner Broadcasting System Inc., his media domain reached new heights with the launch of CNN, the first 24-hour television news network. When I look back at all my business accomplishments, CNN was the most exciting and most, most challenging and the most satisfying when, when we were successful because you know, I got proven right. I was Time Magazine's uh, Person of the Year. Number nine, Oprah Winfrey, chairwoman and CEO of Harpo Productions and the Oprah Winfrey Network. Never in 25 years have we ever welcomed a sitting president and first lady. Up next is the highly renowned talk show host, actress and philanthropist who has been cited as the quintessential role model by just about everyone. Nothing worked. Everything fell apart. I'm cooking, I don't cook. I certainly didn't cook then, and certainly don't cook on a hot plate on TV. After starting in media at a Tennessee radio station, Oprah relocated to the Windy City in 1983 to host the talk show that would later be renamed The Oprah Winfrey Show. And five years later, she became the first woman ever to own and produce her own talk show with Harpo Productions. <laughs> 47 Emmys later, Oprah moved on, establishing her own successful media group, which plays to over 83 million households in the U.S. alone. Have you been disappointed at how difficult it is to get things done? It, it, it can be painful to watch. <laughs> Number eight, Sir Richard Branson, founder and chairman of Virgin Group Limited. You know, there, there is a very, very thin dividing line between success and failure. Um, most people who set up in business without financial backing um, they fail at some times in their lives. He's the founder of one of the largest and most recognized European conglomerates. Started as a small record and magazine business in the mausoleum of his local church, the Virgin brand eventually burgeoned into the commercial empire it is today. Being a self-made billionaire with affairs in just about every industry known to man, whether it's music, mobile phones, airlines, or even space travel, it's safe to say that the vibrant and adventurous Sir Branson's certainly no longer a virgin when it comes to business success. An invitation to his Necker Island remains on every aspiring mogul's bucket list. My original plans for Necker was actually to turn it into a recording studio. I didn't continue with that plan, instead decided to turn it into a place where wonderful, interesting people could come, debate issues, think, and have a great time. And I'm quite glad, actually, that that's where we ended up. Number seven, Walt Disney, co-founder of the Walt Disney Company. Good evening, friends. After co-founding his namesake company with his brother Roy in 1923, Disney made his first mark with Mickey Mouse, but continued his triumphs with the release of the first ever full-length animated feature, 1937's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. 
I'm doing, uh, I think, as much animated cartoon as I've ever done. The only thing is I diversify. A grander achievement yet was opening Disneyland in 1955. Well, this is the blueprint, and the dream is Disneyland, the park that we're constructing near Anaheim, California. From there, Walt's company took the world by its ears, establishing and acquiring other well-known names and ushering them into the Disney family. It's difficult to believe, yet heartening to know, that this media empire was all started by a man and a mouse. We promised to keep you informed as our dream became a reality. Number six, Michael Bloomberg, founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP. What's your advice to these small business founders today? Uh, work hard, you're gonna need some luck, but the harder you work, the luckier you get. After being laid off as a general partner at Solomon Brothers in 1981, Bloomberg opted to invest his $10 million severance package towards building a company of his own. Today, that company is one of the largest finance management and business software development companies in the world with nearly 200 offices and reported revenues as high as $8 billion. As long as they're here, they can spend some money. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like yes. In addition to his triumph as an entrepreneur, Bloomberg has enjoyed further success as a politician, having been elected the 108th mayor of New York City, an office he held for three back-to-back -back terms. Greatest disappointments, a lot of things that didn't work, but if, if you start things, then people think about it and down the road somebody else Thanks will so. get it done. Number five, Rupert Murdoch, founder, former chairman, and CEO of News Corporation. Here's the man who brought names like the Wall Street Journal and 20th Century Fox to their present day glory. Murdoch found quick success with his acquisitions of numerous newspapers throughout Australia before expanding overseas to seasoned giants like the New York Post and News of the World. You will wonder what my plans are for the papers. Whatever proposals for progress may be developed, there will be no fundamental change in the characteristics. Founded in 1979, Murdoch's News Corporation was dissolved in 2013 amid scandal and the media powerhouse split into two new separate entities, a reformed News Corp and 21st Century Fox, the latter of which Murdoch continues to serve as chairman and CEO. Do you accept that the evidence demonstrates that your company managed the legal risk by covering it up? No. Even though, as you've said, the sum... No, there was no attempt. Number four, Sir Ka Shing Lee, chairman of Hutchison Wampoa and Chung Kong Holdings. Lee Ka Shing is known as Asia's richest man, but you cannot avoid his business if you live in Hong Kong. Water, electricity, grocery stores, everything that we do here, Lee Ka Shing has a piece of. And now he wants to expand at over 80. Recently ranked as the richest man in Asia, Sir Lee's billions are generated from his titles as chairman of both the planet's biggest operator of shipping container terminals, as well as the world's largest retailer of health and beauty products. Among his other accomplishments, Sir Lee has also been honored in other countries around the globe, garnering a knight status from the Order of the British Empire and a Legion of Honor merit from France. Asia's most powerful man, he should probably just change his name to Kaching. Number three, Carlos Slim Elu, chairman and CEO of Telmex, America Mobile, and Grupo Carso. I think the, the real philanthropists are the people that give his life for the people, not the money. As owner of Latin America's largest international conglomerate, it's easy to understand how this man has been continually switching on and off as the world's richest man, a title he reclaimed from Bill Gates in 2014 your goal to make money. Is that your goal? Yes, I think uh, it's not the goal. I think uh, it's not the money, the goal. The goal is uh, to make uh, companies grow, develop. Serving as chairman and CEO of South America's primary telecommunications provider, Slim's division is merely a branch beneath a much larger tree of connected companies that together form Grupo Carso, which is headed by his son, Carlos Slim Domit. While Slim the Elder is regarded as the Warren Buffett of Mexico, a shrewd business transaction with the New York Times put him in headlines in North America and grew his global influence and reach. To be happy is not static. It's not that you arrive to some point and you stay there 
like in the histories, and they were happy all, all, always, no? They, they, no? And they get happy always. I think it's a, a way of living. Number two, Warren Buffett, chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. How important is it for you to do a, uh, a big acquisition? What's holding you back? <laughs> Finding the right <laughs> acquisition doesn't make any sense doing acquisitions. It makes sense doing good acquisitions. And whenever we find what we do it, we, I think we did one day before yesterday for $3 billion. Speaking of Buffett, he takes our number two spot. Although not the founder of the multinational giant Berkshire Hathaway, Buffett is without question the company's most famous principal, as it acquired many large names under his leadership, including Geico, Dairy Queen, Clayton Holmes, and countless others. My grandfather had a grocery store, so I went to my grandfather and I said, uh, how about giving me a deal on Coke so I can sell it around the neighborhood? And he sold me at the rate of six bottles for a quarter, and I went around and sold them for a nickel each, and I sold out every time. And, uh, I had no inventory, I had no receivables, I had the best business I ever had. <laughs> In addition to his entrepreneurial achievements, Buffett has also garnered attention for his philanthropic efforts and modesty, living in the same house as he did before achieving billionaire status. But don't let the nice guy exterior fool you. The Oracle of Omaha is one shrewd investor. Well, I, I, I believe in the power of advertising. Before we unveil our top captain of industry, here are a few honorable mentions. And the Very little handy. Sussex Trug basket. Yes. That's a pretty one. Isn't that, that, isn't that a and sweet And these one? are called Trugs. They have little feet and they stand on top of the damp soil so that the basket doesn't get dirty right. and you keep this yeah. above the soil. Uh, an organic growth, both for the group of more than 10%, mm -hmm. and for Louis Vuitton, which is one of the major brands of the group, also more than 10%. We will take a person with a positive attitude and lesser education experience and expertise over someone who has all those attributes but has a very bad attitude. It's the hardest attribute to build inside a company and with your customers is trust. He co-founded Nike by selling track shoes out of the back of his car and relying on a plan written in business school. He had his sights set on big things. Really my life's work um, is really going to be hopefully what we do in philanthropy and education and trying to improve high school education in the United States through the National Academy Foundation, which I've been involved in for 30 years. Number one, Sam Walton, founder of Walmart. All of you raise your right hand, will you? If a customer comes within 10 feet of me, if a customer comes within 10 feet of me, I'm going to look him in the eye, look him in the eye, and greet him. And greet him. Taking top honors is the man who pioneered the original discount store. When he opened his first five and dime in Bentonville, Arkansas, Walton laid out the strategy of sacrificing profit margins for the potential of higher sales numbers. Sam was driven by the idea of we're in business to serve people. This schematic paid off when his store spanned to 24 branches within five years of Walmart's 1962 foundation. Today, Walton's tradition of guaranteeing the lowest price is still strongly implemented by the company. The result? Net profits of over $16 billion from its 11,000 plus locations around the globe. And the biggest public corporation on the planet. Hi, Janice. Hi. How are you? Doing Hi. so good. It's been a long time since I've been over here. Hi, everybody. Do you agree with our list? Which business mogul drives you to try to be your own boss? For more prominent top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Then we had the AOL merger, so it didn't last very long, and I was down and out again.